Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Lucas. Um, guys who don't know, Lucas is Australia's leading biohacker, uh, someone I've watched online for over a year. Um, so it's really cool to be speaking. And, you know, someone who is definitely in the sort of same sort of category as like your Hubermans in that they love biohacking, health, um, anything like that. And what's really cool about Lucas is a lot of people in this space are, you know, they love, don't get me wrong, they love evidence and, and that's great. And they'll kind of, you know, go through all the studies. But Lucas does that. But on top of that, he also has actual experience on himself like he's actually tried it so he he doesn't just offer like here's what the science says but like here's what i found from my own personal experiment so lucas great to be chatting man that lose you for a bit or oh, is that is that back now yeah you're back now <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. No, it's great, great to be here and I'm looking forward to chatting. I mean, I'm, I've been very passionate about the biohacking and, and human optimization. I mean, I've been very interested in various research studies around testosterone optimization. And as you said before, I mean, it's one thing to read things on paper, but then another thing to actually like apply it to your own physiology and biology. And so, you know, some people say you can talk the talk, but I, you know, I really have, you know, walk the walk. <laughs> yeah, nice. So you, how, how did you actually get started in biohacking? <clears throat> yeah, so my, my journey really started out um, as I was playing semi-professional soccer. So I was always on the hunt for different supplements, different compounds that could improve my performance on the soccer field, whether that be you know, buffering lactic acid or improving my decision making on the soccer field or I was just, you know, interested in gaining 1% advantage um, for my overall performance, mostly physical. And, the, and then from there, I basically um, fell in love with the whole idea around um, being able to take control of your biology and being able to like hijack your hormones to your advantage. Um, and then from there, I basically... I got involved in Australia's very first nootropics startup. So um, nootropics are basically cognitive enhancers, compounds that can improve any aspect of cognition, you know, alertness, focus, memory, reducing anxiety, things of that nature. Um, I got involved in that startup and whilst I was, you know, researching and learning about these compounds, I transitioned out of my exercise science degree, which I'd completed a year and a half of, and I transitioned into a full-time um, naturopathy degree. So I spent four years, you know, studying full-time Bachelor of Health Science in naturopathy. Um, and then from there, I just really, you know, started creating content online, like creating a lot of posts on Instagram. That's where I started first and then pivoted to like, a podcast and then a YouTube channel and now I've got a newsletter, a website and yeah, to this day, I just love sharing cutting edge health information to the masses. Nice, man. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, what, because I didn't even know like uh, soccer was that big in Australia, right? Like I thought it was uh, rugby was the main one and what's what's the other one Aussie Rules football <laughs> i've AFL. seen that before. yeah that i've seen when i went to um bali that was like on tv a lot and i was like this game is fucking mental <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i was between um i did play a little bit of the aussie rules afl football but um mm. i remember when i was in grade one my teacher said oh you know why don't you become goalkeeper for our soccer team on the weekend and I played so well that the coach from the other team tried to poach me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was, I was apparently like I was a freak goalkeeper back back in the day and then um, ended up playing defense for like, dude, I, I dedicated my whole life to soccer. Like I, my, my initial yeah. goal and dream was to, just like every young boy, is to become, you know, playing the EPL for Chelsea. Like that, that was my goal. Yeah. Nice. So... So your main sort of thing is has been testosterone, right? Like that's the sort of thing you're kind of seen as an expert on. Um, you got to like a thousand uh, NGL, no? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, the um, the testosterone was a you know a huge focus of mine after learning about like why did I get interested in biohacking in the first place? It was about how can I achieve peak physical performance, you know, peak mental performance, and then I realized that the the one hormone that was going to have the most influence over specifically like just energy output and workout performance and mental functioning and different mental clarity was testosterone. And so then I was like, you know what? Mm. If testosterone reigns supreme as like the number one hormone that men, young men should really optimize, then I'm going to try and do everything I possibly can to get it as high as possible naturally. Um, And I did get just shy of a thousand nanograms per deciliter total testosterone and my free testosterone now is sitting at around 580. Um, and, you know, the the outcome from that is basically like I can train really, really hard pretty much six days a week. You know, I've got good, good libido, good mental stamina, good resilience um, and everything that like guys want these days, basically. Nice, man. No, that's awesome. Those, those types of sort of testosterone levels, like uh, are, you know, right at the higher end. Um, I haven't actually been able to even get that close because I think, as I was saying to you last time, every time I I start like a new cycle of like, right, I'm gonna do like two, three months and try and get as high as I can. Like <laughs> something just ha- <clears throat> something just happens like at work where I'm like, okay, realistically, like I'm not gonna have the time to like dedicate to because that's it's it's an undertaking right to get to those sorts of levels yeah i mean you gotta like ice your balls (laughs) yeah i mean there's definitely you know icing the balls is definitely one component but there's like you really have to you prioritize it like you can't be just like you know going out on the weekend and getting smashed drink like i don't drink like you just can't live that lifestyle if you're trying to trying to optimize tea no, what what about the icing the balls thing? Like, how did that come to be about? Because that's so interesting. Like, was there any sort of like studies that put you onto that, or was it just like first hand experience? Yeah, it's funny, man. I mean, I've got the um, I've got the title now, which is like ice over balls guy. You've heard of knees over toes guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that, yeah, so that makes sense. They they call me the ice over balls guy now, but um, yeah, basically, man, like. I came across icing of the testes on a bodybuilding forum and there was a thread that was posted like back in 2006 and I was like, what the hell, what what are these guys talking about? Like they're talking about icing their balls before they're trying to break a PB, like weightlifting and I'm like, you know, what are they doing this for? Like what's, what's the science behind it? I scrolled down, none of these guys had any explanation as to like why or how it could assist testosterone. Um, and then I dive deep into the literature myself and I came across studies, man, that showed that um, something called nighttime uh, scrotal cooling or testicular cooling actually massively increases sperm count, sperm motility, sperm viability, basically making men fertile AF. And I was like, you know what? Mm. I have a feeling that if it's making men fertile, there's a very good chance that that's a consequence of boosting testosterone. And so then I looked further into the literature and I realized that um, if the testes overheat by two degrees outside core body temperature, it will completely shut down and arrest spermatogenesis or sperm production. So I was like, shit, like this is important. Like we need to keep our testes cool. Mm. And then I did some blood Mm. work before and after icing for like 12 weeks and I saw my testosterone go up like, by like 150 points and i'm like what the hell man this stuff is legit <laughs> yeah no that's mental um yeah so because i guess that's the reason why the balls are outside of the body right is because they need to be kept at a different temperature yeah exactly. so it, does, it makes sense yeah because the like the sperm cells themselves are they're very like sensitive to heat and if you look at like let's just say we reverse we reverse this entire practice and you deliberately applied yeah. heat like a hot pack to your testes three times a day for 15 minutes, you probably see a decline. You would see a decline in yeah. sperm count. You would see a decline in testosterone. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, so is that the regimen then, three times a day for 15 minutes icing? 
Yeah, that's like the the official you know Lucas Owen protocol that I basically put together, um, and I actually talked about it mm. extensively in um, TRT Free, which is like a new like testosterone optimization course that I've developed, which is like trtfree.com. We like finally secured that mm-hmm. domain name, and I basically in that course I basically outlined all of the different biohacks and strategies to optimize testosterone and, and icing is definitely one of those strategies that, you know, if a guy did, kept everything the exact same, like nutrition, training, and all he did was ice his balls, like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes up to three times a day, I'm very confident he'll see an increase in testosterone. Interesting. Mate, I'm, I might have to try it, you know. <laughs> I might have to. Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely definitely a game changer if you've um, if you've never tried it before. I mean, most guys like report you know deeper voice, waking up with morning wood, a heightened sex drive. Like the guys love it. Like it's just definitely definitely yeah. a winner. Nice. Um, Sistanch, our favorite. <laughs> Why? What do you think about it that actually improves flaccid penis length? Yeah, so Sistanch is a um, a herbal medicine that's very well respected in traditional Chinese medicine, um, and its full name is Sistanch tuberosa or Sistanch deserticola. Um, and basically, this particular herb was used in so many different male fertility formulas in Chinese medicine. Mm. And I'm like, you know, why are they why are they including this herb in ev- like almost every single formula? It must be like the god, must be like god mode. <laughs> so I'm like, mm. all right. So this stuff, you know, on paper, it, it, it looks really, really freaking good. Like it's you see in studies where it shows that it increases um, sperm count, DHT, testosterone secretion, converting cholesterol into pregnenolone, basically ticking off all the things that men want. And so beyond that, Sistanch has a unique ability to inhibit PDE5, the the enzyme that's found in the lining of the penis itself. And by doing that, it actually increases blood flow to the genital area. So like it literally increases flaccid hanging size. Um, And guys, like guys can notice this, like if they just Obviously, they're going to notice it if they go to the toilet. They take a piss. Like they're going to look at, look down, and they're going to be like, "Oh, like it literally looks bigger." Um, you know, guys, yeah. guys literally report that. Yeah, my friends have come back and said that. For that is that and uh, for Doja as well, increasing ball size as well. That's, that's something I've got back a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, what, what the, do you think the the, 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 sorry, me- the mechanism the mechanism behind that? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well. I think definitely a blood flow component. I think some of the compounds that are found within the herb itself. When we when we look at herbal medicine, we basically need to remind ourselves that the herb cystanch is not just like there are many different um, constituents, alkaloids, polyphenols, flavonoids. Like it's a complete package, and so like yeah. It's such early research to be able to like pinpoint, oh, this is the exact constituent found in the yeah. herb that was it. Yeah, you know, it's very hard to extrapolate and understand that data, but I, w- I would imagine that it's probably because there's like some unique, like, I don't know, constituents that cause vasodilation of the, the, the um, cavernosa tissue on the penis, and that causes like enlargement of the blood vessels and increases resting hang size yeah yeah no that's uh, that's um you know one of the things i spoke to a, a researcher who did a meta-analysis on tonka alley and you know I, I basically asked him like what you know what do you think is the, the method of action and he basically said that you can't really tell <laughs> like because there's so many active compounds in it that all you know work in different ways like it's not you know i guess kind of when we think of or like usually uh you think of like a supplement like tonka alley like you just think that's what it is it's just tonka alley like powder or like let's say vitamin d but actually there's so many different active compounds within it that all could potentially work in different ways and it's you know potentially like a whole package as you said of of 
active compounds that actually benefit the body. And that's one of the reasons, man, why I decided to study like naturopathy, which is like the complete opposite to becoming a pharmacist. My, my dad, yeah, he's a pharmacist. Like I had the choice of going down that path and I worked in my dad's pharmacy. So I, under, I was researching the crap out of medications, understanding like how do they work? What are the pathways they work on? And realizing that when you literally take a drug, you're taking just one chemical. You're literally taking Thing, it's like yeah. an isolated chemical from a, you know. So then, when you look at herbs, the way that they're packaged by Mother Nature, they're extremely intelligent, man. Like there's going to be compounds found in the herb that have, you know, like downstream effects on other parts of the body, maybe helping the liver, helping the kidneys, helping blood vessels, mm. like working on in so many different ways. Sustanch is good for the kidneys as well, right? Yeah, yeah. If you look at the like, if you look at traditional Chinese medicine, they literally say that sistanch is the one of the most powerful kidney jing or kidney ying um, restorative mm. herb. Specifically, kidney. There's like kidney yang. It's like a kidney yang tonic, um, which is similar to like cordyceps, horny goat weed. Mm. Um, Shilajit has that kidney yang properties. Um, but then if you look at like the kidney yin herbs, they're like more of the, I would say more of like the estrogenic herbs, like Romania, you know, licorice, some of these other herbs, they're like, but if you look at like, and deer antler, deer antler is one of the most powerful kidney yang tonics on the planet. Interesting. But you know what's interesting as well? Like the, the Amazon rainforest, there is potentially, you know, thousands tens of thousands of years worth of natural sort of remedies that we know absolutely nothing about i i i like i mean that for me man actually really excites me because i'm like mm. like one of my one of my end goal legacy projects is that i eventually one day obviously i'll you know create my own supplements but for me the ultimate goal is to in like to uh release a brand new ingredient to market. Like, I mean, mm. some sort of novel herb or a novel alkaloid that no one else has really talked about. You know, oh, yeah. one, of, one of my goals is like, I believe I can do that because I've got, I've got the research skills. I've got the, I've got the eye for it. I've got great mentors. I've got Sean Wells. Shout out to Sean Wells, one of my great... He's considered the world's greatest formulator. Like, he literally mentors me. So, I've got all the right... Mm you know, check pieces, like checker pieces in place. No, man, that's, that's, that's kind of similar to what we want to do. You know, we want to find all this stuff that, you know, it isn't valued by Western medicine because it's, well, it's natural. Right. Um, and no one's really doing that. Like, I mean, I guess with the Amazon, it's, it's a tough situation because it's obviously just being like chopped down. Um, but, it's it's fascinating to think what what could happen if someone was to like go and properly explore that sort of area. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. For Doja, so for Doja, I think we kind of know a little bit more about the method of action, right? Like, it's it looks like it does uh, increase LH production. Um, do you think that? is kind of the reason why, you know, users could report like an increase in testicle size. I do think Fedoja does have the, the ability to either stimulate luteinizing hormone production or in fact, some of the constituents found within the herb itself may be able to mimic the effects of luteinizing hormone and, and possibly even bind to some of the luteinizing hormone receptors in the testes. So when we look mm. at like what people experience, and this is, you know, my experience as well with Fedoja, yeah, like it legitimately will make your balls enlarge. It will literally cause bigger, it will give you bigger testicles, which is like a freaking great sign. Um, if you look at like what that means from like a, a biological perspective, it means that you're generating more sperm. Um, and when my free testosterone was at its absolute peak through blood work analysis, I was using Fedoja for like two months before the blood test, like almost every single day, mm. maybe like five days on, two days off, like sort of basic cycle strategy. 
And yeah, I felt freaking awesome, man. The only thing about Fedoja though is when I stopped taking it, um, I literally felt like I felt like I was missing it a lot. Like I almost felt like I went into testicular withdrawal. <laughs> My testicles went into withdrawal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it shrunk down again. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. Fedoja, Fedoja's one that, you know, I've given to my friends and a lot of my friends have come to me and be like, what the fuck? Like, my balls are actually bigger. So, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I think uh, I think Fedoja also has some, like, dopaminergic properties as well. Like, when I first tried it, I literally felt like an Energizer bunny. I just felt, like, highly energetic. I had a, an, an amazing... I remember the very first time I tried it, I went to the gym and I had like the best workout ever. I noticed that I was like mm. sweating more than usual. Like I was just noticing that like I was dripping in sweat during the workout. And for me, that's like, that's a great sign that your androgen signaling is working yeah. really well. Yeah, those that's the best times when you take a supplement and you know, you can feel it pretty quickly. Like you can go to the gym and you, you have that energy. Like for I think for most of our customers, it's it's usually the Tonkat for Doja pair and, and maybe Sistanch where, you know, pretty quickly you're going to feel Tonka Ali in your system. Um, mm. And, you know, that translate into more energy and then, you know, you can go and sort of spend that how you want in the gym. Yeah, well, Tonka Ali, I mean, if we look at like the initial effects that most guys report, um, because it has the ability to to drop the cortisol and put the body more into like a parasympathetic um, response. When I first used, I'll, ne I'll also never forget the first time that I used Tonka Ali. Um, I felt immediately like just more alpha, like more better ability <laughs> to like just, just dominate. Like I'd be interacting with people and I'm like, I felt like I could like juggle the conversation. I could just crack jokes, not give a shit about what they think of me. Like it's all the things that like basically yeah. having a swagger like effect. <laughs> Definitely checks out with having more testosterone. Like if you yeah. kind of uh, know anyone who's like doing crazy amounts of test testosterone, like roid heads they do not give a fuck they will go in the gym and just be like absolutely screaming like <laughs> just not giving a shit about what anyone thinks it's 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 quite funny to watch and like it's you know in a way it's like fair play <laughs> yeah yeah and you look at their like you look at their demeanor like obviously they train with intensity and like they let, let's say they're injecting testosterone and they're on, they're on like i don't know 400 milligrams of testosterone a week which is a pretty freaking high dosage, they will come across as like when they're training, they're training intensely, you know, shouting and shit like that. But if you go up to them and actually have a chat, like they're actually like these guys, when their estrogen and DHT are like are well controlled, like they're calm, they're, they're, they're relaxed, they feel assertive, just it's just a unique makeup and testosterone I think what we should really emphasize for the guys that are tuning into the podcast here today is that testosterone is psychoactive. Like it literally makes your brain sharper. Um, it influences the way that you perceive yourself. Like it literally will have that effect. It will, you know, make you think, make you perceive yourself as more valuable, you know, and more, more, more alpha. Mm. No, 100%, man. Like, testosterone is a good thing. I think uh, in today's world, any sort of, like, masculine traits are kind of being demonized. But mm. uh, in terms of, like, how it actually makes you feel and, like, the impact it can have on your life, like, having optimal testosterone is probably one of the most important things you can do as a man. Oh, absolutely, man. And Obviously, like testosterone is a is a core component, but then also, I think it's it's important to understand that like, in order to generate a shitload of testosterone naturally, you do have to optimize like your thyroid as well. Like you need to really dial in that thyroid mm. function as well. You need to make sure that your cortisol levels are not too high. Um, you need to make sure your insulin levels are not too high. Uh, like there's many other hormones that that like work in synergism with maintaining high testosterone. Mm. 
So what would you say are like, uh, I know you've, you've just done your, your TRT free thing, so you don't want to give, give everything away, but like, what would you say are like some of the core things like people should be doing to get those dialed in testosterone levels? Yeah, obviously, when we're looking at uh, testosterone optimization in totality, you know, there are many different things that men can be doing from a dietary perspective, lifestyle, um, exercise, and some other unique underground biohacks. Um, so if we look at like from an exercise standpoint, and you know, I've outlined this in, in detail in, in trtfree.com, um, from an exercise standpoint, definitely you have to hit the weights. I don't mean like punch the weights. I mean like you have to hit the gym. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have to lift heavy, train hard, you know, six to 10 reps. That's the sort of rep ranges you should be aiming for. Um, and you want to lift heavy. And I mean doing compound movements, squatting, deadlifting, bench pressing, chin-ups. If you just did those four exercises and you did that like three to four times a week and you loaded up the plates and lifted pretty heavy, you will see an increase in testosterone. That's like very well established. If you stack that with like high-intensity sprinting, like really, really intense sprint training, you're also going to see like testosterone levels skyrocket from that as well. So... The worst form of exercise that men could be doing is actually long duration, low intensity physical activity. So that's like going for a run for like 45 minutes to an hour um, or you know maybe cycling for like an, an hour or two. Like this is not going to lead to increase in te- increases in testosterone. It has to be like short bout high intensity activity. Yeah, definitely. It checks out because as well, uh, I remember reading um, about the squat study about how like you know compound lifts can really benefit testosterone. And sprinters, if you th- you know you you think about sprinters, they're all really ripped, like yeah. massive, broad shoulders. Even though they're like you know they're sprinters, pretty crazy. Yeah, and then you compare that to like a marathon, like a marathon runner, and they're just like super skinny, yeah. high cortisol, sympathetic dominant. Yeah, the 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 really intense long distance marathon stuff I think is is quite bad for you. <laughs> yeah. Particularly if you're a man. Oh, absolutely. Um, and if you look at if you look at other like modalities and pathways, I mean, from a dietary perspective, man, I mean, we could we could break this down into, you know, macronutrients. But like what do you, what do you think would be like the questions that guys would have when it comes to nutrition like what do you think they they struggle with i think these days people know what to avoid like they know what they shouldn't be eating right like processed foods junk but i do think um a lot of our customers struggle with what to eat um right so what sort of foods i guess would you suggest are like should be the sort of staple of your diet if you're trying to optimize testosterone yeah so when it comes to selecting testosterone boosting foods i mean we're looking at foods like eggs steak butter olive oil macadamia nuts brazil nuts um berries honey ghee um, you know, white rice, you know, as your carbohydrate source, um, whey protein, interesting. There's some cool research on whey protein impacting testosterone. Like I think these these are foods that should be staples. Like go and op- for the guys listening mm. in, go and open your fridge and please make sure you got some butter in there, some eggs, you know, some steak, <laughs> um, even organ meats as well. So like chicken hearts, uh, chicken hearts and liver and kidney. They taste like shit. No one likes them, but they're so like nutrient dense that they they really mm. will lead to increases in testosterone and also thyroid function as well. Liver, I've I've seen like livers having some of the most nutrients of anything on the planet. Yeah, yeah, liver is like a um, nutrient powerhouse. It's definitely like a superfood. Um, chicken hearts are pretty good mm. as well, man. Like they're so high in cholesterol, very high in coenzyme Q10, vitamin B12, and a whole lot more. Nice and yeah, so t- a lot of um, 
you know, when people come to us about asking about diet, that, you know, the main thing I always say is get your, your healthy fats in, get your cholesterol, uh, because that is the building block of testosterone, right? Yeah, yeah. This is uh, like if, if you want to look at the opposite, if you tell a guy to go on a very low fat diet, I can almost guarantee you that his testosterone levels would drop by up to like 20 yeah. to 25 percent. Like if you if you tell a guy like just cut out all fat from your diet, it's not going to be good. Like that's going to lead to devastating effects on testosterone. Yeah, if someone comes to us and they're like, my, my testosterone levels are low or I'm struggling to raise them with the supplements, that is usually the first question we ask is what's your what's your diet like? How much you know what how many healthy fats are you consuming? Yeah, yeah, and I guess like if we're looking at the fat, like the fat sources, uh, one of them that I think is you know crucial that men need to be avoiding is canola oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, and the other thing is like I hear guys say that soy doesn't lower testosterone, but I'm not a I'm not a fan of soy. Like I'm just not. It's full of estro- phytoestrogens. It will lower DHT, mm. and I've never met a guy who feels good on a high soy diet. I've never met a single guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I avoid it. Um, so what's your current stop supplement stack like? It's changing quite a lot from like day to day because I'm experimenting. I mean, I'm always like trialing new shit. Um, new, 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 new compounds, new supplements, new nootropics. Um, but there's definitely a few that are definitely like staples in my, do- in my supplement stack. Compounds like taurine, um, artichoke extract, uh, tutka, which is a liver protective compound. A couple of other herbs like sistanch, tonkarali, fedoja here and there. Um, and then also sometimes if I need it, I will supplement with a small amount of iron, even though, you know, I eat a lot of red meat. I find that I respond pretty well to iron. And then sometimes I'll, you know, integrate some other antioxidants. So like glutathione, sometimes I'll use that glutathione, you know, just to help with that detoxification effect. Um, But I, I just love experimenting, man. Like I love trialing new compounds. I love analyzing them and figuring out how they affect my biology. Yeah, same, man. That's, that's pretty much all I've ever done. It's just trial and error. You know, you, tr- you try adding something new. If it if it goes well, you keep it. If not, you know, on to the next. Well, that's um, that's actually an important point when it comes to like like trialing substances or trialing new herbs or compounds. I do like to give compounds or new herbs like a two shot analysis. So like I'll do like the first run, mm-hmm. which is like. I might try it for like two weeks or so, two to three weeks or so, and then I'll stop. And then I'll come back in like three months time and revisit it, try it again and see how it matches with the first experience. So like I'll, I will revisit compounds because I like to, I want to see how they work when I'm in a different headspace because I'm not always feeling mm. like amazing. I'm not always feeling optimal. So I like to try them in different headspaces. Yeah, definitely. I, I I think I found that something similar to that as well, where you know it might just be that what you're what you're adding in in your current environment, either be like your headspace or um, you know like your current training method, or even like other supplements you're taking. Like they could all be interacting with each other in ways we don't know yet. Because at the end of the day, there is no you know research really on what happens when you take these 10 supplements you know it's kind of just like well we'll see well it's exactly right man i mean like for for guys that like complain that there's no human clinical studies on those combinations of herbs like you know in trt free the the course i've developed like there's select herbs that i recommend and it's like there's going to be there's individual research in rat studies on these herbs but there's no research on the combined effect. All we have to go by mm. is anecdotal evidence of guys doing blood work before and after. Like, and then it's like you're just collecting, mm. you're collecting evidence from guys that are doing their blood tests. 
Yeah, and and you know, above all, man, try it for yourself. Like, if you, if you're really trying to optimize, you just got to try it for yourself. Um, as I said to you last time, we we are trying to do a study where we do a full stack of like you know seven to ten different supplements and we do the full blood work panel throughout uh you know measure lean mass gain like the full works but like it's so difficult like it, there are so many hoops to jump through to get this study done like we've been already talking about it for six months and like <laughs> very little progress has been made so it's extremely difficult to do this type of research and extremely expensive as well well, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. When you guys make progress, I'll be probably 50 years old by the time you guys finish the study. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, keep, keep me posted. We'll, we'll try and do it before you retire, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's say a, a guy has got low testosterone and he's he's sent you an email at uh, trtfree.com and he's like right what why should i do this over trt what you know what would you say to someone who's considering doing trt and and instead of the natural route yeah no that's a that's a brilliant question and that is literally the reason why we developed trtfree.com um because we wanted to develop a course for men that are on the verge of going onto TRT. So this is for guys that are mm. like, all right, what can I do naturally from a dietary perspective, new, um, lifestyle, supplementation, environmental, and exercise? What can I do to, how do I dial in all of these different elements that contribute to testosterone? And so that is the whole objective is like, before a guy ever should consider going onto TRT, they first need to ask themselves this question. Number one, are they willing to take testosterone pretty much for the rest of their life? That's number one, because once you go on TRT, you might as well stay on it. Like, because it, you can yeah. come off it, but you might as well stay on. Like, you might as well just stay on it and it means that you'll be injecting a hormone into your body you know, for the for the rest of your life. That can be difficult when you're trying to travel. Um, you know, like it's not the funnest thing in the world to inject yourself. Like <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's it's miserable, I can assure you. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, there's obviously the fertility. So like guys who are in their early twenties or early thirties, obviously there's gonna be guys that want to have kids in the future. If they go on to T on if they go on TRT their fertility will take a serious deep dive. Um, fertility, sperm count, all that will drop when you go on testosterone replacement therapy. Whereas with the TRT-free approach that I've developed, the whole premise is that you're going to be improving fertility as you boost your testosterone. Like it's all of the things that I recommend are going to also help with fertility. So... You know, I've sort of developed this neuroendocrine reboot method, the NER method, um, which is about basically strengthening the signal from the brain to the testes to make more testosterone in the blood. So, um, look, I don't, I don't think TRT is bad necessarily. I just think that there's there's a time and place for it. You know, it's going to be for guys who have mm. tried absolutely everything. They've exhausted all routes. They've tried so many different supplements, nutrition, like exercise, lifestyle, but they can't get their testosterone up. That's when, you know, testosterone replacement therapy can be useful. Absolutely. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a choice. It's a choice of do I want to be healthy and get my body to do it myself or do I want to rely on synthetic external testosterone that i'm going to inject to my ass cheek every couple of days for the rest of my life like if you are in your 20s i can almost get unless you've like absolutely caned steroids there is real or, or let's say you have some sort of like unique medical condition there is really no reason for you to be on trt if you're going to do trt at that point you, you basically might as well just do do steroids do a steroid dose right because that's the only reason i can think of someone in their tw 20s wanting to inject 
uh, testosterone is for like insane muscle growth that you would get with steroids. So if you're if you're thinking about doing it, you you need to actually ask yourself are you okay with injecting yourself every couple of days i mean unless you get the long uh the like slow release stuff which is really expensive um and you have to go to a clinic to do um for the rest of your life man it's it's a huge commitment like i i injecting yourself is genuinely miserable like it's it's when i had to do it or when i was doing it it was i was put it off so much to the point where i'd even miss pins which then is like really bad because you're, you know, you're injecting like 300 milligrams, your testosterone spikes, and then like for the every day after it's dropping. And then if you miss a day, like you, you basically like low testosterone, potentially even lower testosterone than what you would have been if you just had your balls making it. So it's a huge commitment. And I don't think that TRT clinics do a good job at, well, I mean, I guess no company would do that, but at promoting the kind of downsides to what what life can look like if you get on TRT and then it, particularly if you come off because coming off means you your body is going to have to start from zero um, to produce testosterone and it's not just an overnight thing. Well, that's that's another great point that you mentioned is that like if a guy is wanting to come off TRT you know, that initial period after coming off TRT, it's going to be a very difficult time. Um, and I see guys, I literally treat guys who, who want to come off and, you know, that's where TRT Free can come in to help. It's basically like a PCT. It's like the most advanced PCT mm. protocol possible. That's what I, you know, developed mm. it for. No, man. And, you know, I would say as well, we have a lot of customer blood work, Um of before and after taking like Donka Ali for Doja. Just, and those people don't always have like the most optimal diets, the most optimal trading methods. So combining like the supplement stack with like your years of diet and you know, all the like little additional things like icing your balls and type of stuff, there really is no need to do TRT. Like it's so pointless unless of course you have tried absolutely everything and like you're still not getting anywhere but i think that's such a small amount of people with who, who you know they would either have some sort of like genetic uh problem or you've done steroids for like 20 years like in that case i think you know you probably are gonna have to do trt yeah no exactly exactly um what's your diet like currently uh, so, uh, my diet is pretty diverse. I mean, I'm not that restrictive. Like most people would think, oh, this guy mm. must like only eat like five different foods. To be honest, man, like I do incorporate a, a wide range of different foods. Like a typical day of eating for me is like, you know, maybe like eggs for breakfast with some onions and carrots and some white rice. And then for lunch, I'll have like a piece of steak with some like, more veggies, maybe some blueberries as a snack, maybe some Greek yogurt in the afternoon, maybe a protein shake here and there. Um, and then for dinner, like again, I'm like doing like a lean meat, like chicken, fish or or steak, um, you know, with a carbohydrate sauce. Like the main thing is that I'm, I'm actually not that restrictive. Like I, I do eat a wide variety of foods and the foods that I really enjoy. So like I'll, I'll eat yogurt, um, I'll have gluten, you know, I'll have sourdough bread. I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Um, I definitely think that the main focus that I, well, the main area that I'm really focusing in on is at least hitting about 180 to 200 grams of protein per day. Um, that's like yeah. usually my, my target. And if I don't, I, I basically work everything around that. Like it's just all about, making sure each meal has at least 40, 40 roughly, roughly 40 grams of protein per meal. Um, trying to keep the fats pretty low. I don't, when I say low, I mean like um, around 80 grams per day. It's not actually mm -hmm. low, but it's like, yeah, it's actually normal. Um, and then carbohydrates, I'm having about 250 to 350 grams per day. Nice. Yeah, I, I like a decent amount of carbs as well. At the moment, I'm I'm on a little bit of a bulk. Um, 
just stuffing my face as much as literally up until the last minute I'm awake is like I'm taking my last bites of food like just trying to cram as much although since I spoke to you I've gained a couple of kilos a couple of weeks I'm I'm gaining pretty good at the moment so nice. I'm hoping in like another couple of months just before the summer I'll be able to do like a nice nice Instagram photo sort of show my show my bulk nice nice man yeah okay last question if someone was looking to raise testosterone but they've never heard of Tonka Ali, Fedoja, Sistanch, what what would you sort of say to them? What's like the, the, the sales pitch, the elevator pitch? Uh, so I'd definitely say to them that herbs can definitely be very powerful um, when it comes to hormone optimization. And, you know, if somebody's never heard of Tonka Ali, Fedoja, Sistanch, uh, I would basically explain to them that these herbs have been used for hundreds of years and we've got enough evidence from um, the rat studies or in vivo studies understand understanding basic mechanism of action and then I'd say to them have a look at what other guys are saying about these herbs look at what they're saying online about these herbs like it's not it's not a placebo because guys like myself are doing blood work before and after and we're literally seeing increases in free testosterone i mean the blood work it's objective data like it can't be faked it can't you, it's not it's not you can't fabricate that um like mm. you just be just be brutally honest and just say like look these herbs are powerful if you know how to use them you stack them with you know the right dietary guidelines and you exercise and you look after your health like man this stuff is powerful definitely very powerful no, man, fully, fully echo that. Um, as you said, we've got loads of blood work now, and um, I'm sure in your in your TRT free, you'll you know once it's been going a while, you'll get some really cool blood work testimonials. Oh, absolutely, man! I mean, you probably I even already, have loads already, right? I was just about to say, yeah, yeah. I've already, I've, already, <laughs> I've literally got a whole folder full of like before and afters. Like, I got a message yesterday from a 44 year old telling me that his testosterone is at 1300 and i'm like man you're an animal Whoa. I'm like you're an animal you're an animal are you double dosing what i'm recommending or like what, what are you doing he's like oh, i'm just you know yeah. he's, he's just really compliant like every now and then you get guys that are yeah. like extremely disciplined and compliant and i know for sure he lives yeah. in dubai you know he's got he's got yeah. a chef like he's got a private chef he's got the perfect environment to do it perfectly so yeah, no, nah, this stuff is powerful. Yeah, and they'll always be hyper responders, man. Like you give, you know, you give ten guys five hundred milligrams of testosterone, and like different people will respond in different ways. Like someone will put on the most muscle, and then someone will put on like less. Um, and I think it's the same with herbs. Like you get hyper responders who just respond really well. And then you get some that are kind of like in the average range. And then some, not everyone even like gets a huge difference. Like you'll obviously get a difference. Hmm. Um, but yeah, different people always seem to respond to different stuff differently. It just seems to be like the way the human body is. 100%, 100%, man. Like I've, I've prescribed very similar protocols to like similar guys, but... Um, you know, one guy will see a huge jump in free testosterone. The other guy will see like only a, a small increase. One guy might have liver issues after some of the herbs that I prescribe. Another guy might say like, no, I've, have, I've literally noticed no issues with my liver. It does come back to individuality um, and try it for yourself. Like when there's guys listening to this podcast today, like if you hear us, Logan and I talk about these compounds like Tonkarali, Sistanch, you know, for Doja, give them a try, you know, give them a go, see how you feel, do the blood work and keep a log, keep a log on your phone and track. The better you can track, the more empowered you become, the more, the more mastery over your biology you have. Absolutely, man. I have a spreadsheet from, <laughs> I think I started it in early 2020 so i've got my body weight i've got i don't i don't like my body weight's pretty much every day and then there's like periods where i just didn't do it but then there's like 
I, you know, I'll do like my blood pressure. I'll measure like my arms. I'll measure like my waist, my shoulder width. Um, then I've got like my blood work I can put onto that. So I can look back and then I've got like notes of like what I'm doing, what I'm eating, how I'm training. So I, I can look back and be like, right, what, where was I at my best? What was I doing? Um, and I think that that's, I, I think it's super valuable just, just for myself, just to be able to look back and be like, okay, what was working? What was the, the, the best biohack of them all is the biohack of tracking. Like if you can, yeah, what, what gets measured gets managed. You know, what you, what you track, yeah. you have power over. So like if you, if you're starting a new diet, like just monitor, like are you sleeping less? Are you sleeping more? Do you have you know better energy? Do you have worse energy? Just the better you can log your your progress, like the more power you have. That's that's the ultimate goal. Absolutely, man. Um, well, I think that's pretty much it, mate. I yeah, think no. Is, is there anything else you want to touch on? No, that that that's that's it. Like, I really you know I'm grateful that you invited me on the podcast, and yeah, we've got a we're both very passionate about a very similar area. I've just you know pioneered and just created a shitload of content on youtube and instagram so yeah now it's awesome chatting logan we'll we'll definitely have to meet up in person uh one day yeah man 100 percent. you know 100 percent. will you know if you're ever out in the uk or if i'm ever sort of east way i'll uh we'll try and arrange a meetup yeah awesome no i appreciate the opportunity to chat and um i look forward to to the next one yeah, guys. So check out Lucas uh, Lucas's stuff. So it's boost your biology. I'll, I'll put all the links below. And if you're, you know, let's say you're struggling with testosterone and you want the full regimen, the supplements, the diet, the the sleep, the the icing, the bores, like all the little stuff. <coughs> check out trt.com. Um, uh, TRT, and that's like TRT the full regimen by the sound of it. Yeah, trtfree.com. TRT free. Sorry, <laughs> slight difference. <laughs> I, w- I wish it was TRT TRT. Free. Yeah, TRT TRT.com. <laughs> that would <laughs> awesome. That stuff. would be a good domain. That'd be. I nah, appreciate domain. appreciate it, Logan. Well, thank you very much, mate. Awesome. Thanks.